guys, I'm Amy, and you've landed on Bella's Bargains. That's my cow, Effingham, and sometimes he co-hosts with me. He's got a lot to say. This channel is Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, and only Dollar Tree. And why? Because everything at the Dollar Tree is a dollar and a quarter, people. So stick around, consider subscribing, and don't forget to give me that big thumbs up. And if you want to know more about the four uploads I do every week, just check out the description box for more information. Enjoy! Wonderful to be here, it's certainly a thrill. You're such a lovely audience, we'd like to take you home with us. We'd like to take you home. I don't really want to stop the show, but I thought you might like to know that the singer's going to sing a song, and he wants you all to sing along. So let me introduce to you the one and only Billy Shears and Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, that's a pusher. Hi, guys. Welcome to Bell's Bargains. My name is Amy. I'm on a Beatles kick, and that, like, I, I'm pretty sure that's in the top three of my favorite Beatles songs. However, ironically, I only know it because of the Bee Gees. So I was a little young for Beatles in their prime, but then the Bee Gees did Sgt. Pepper's, and I was like, ah! And then I got to know it from the Beatles. Probably my favorite Beatles. What is your favorite Beatles song? Let's put that one in the comments down, down below. Tell me what your favorite Beatles song is. Okay. Hi, guys. Welcome. Today is normally what I would call themed Thursday. However, I'm doing a challenge instead. So let me talk to you about this challenge before we get going. This is the third Thursday thrift flips. Say that five times fast. Third Thursday thrift flips. It's the triple TF. <laughs> okay. And this is an open invite, invite playlist. So make sure that after you watch my video, go down and you've got to visit Tammy and Marika. They are the two hosts. I will honestly tell you, Rusted Willow is, that's Tammy. That's one of my favorite channels. I think she's extraordinarily talented. I'm just getting to know Marika from Marika's Creations. It's not a channel I was familiar with before because, you know, that happens. It's one of the great things about these challenges is we find these other chan channels and we get to, to meet some really phenomenal creators. Okay, so this is the Rusted Willow and Marika's Creations are the two hosts right there. It's a beautiful thumbnail, by the way. And I'm super excited. This was last minute that I went on this because I had not found this challenge before. But again, I love Tammy from the Rusted Willows, so I'm excited to be on this. All right, so it's a thrift flip. Now, for those of you new to my channel, I oh, I have a dog going crazy. Come here, Jack, do you want to come up? He, want, he can't jump this high. I'm up on a stool. Come here, baby. Okay. Here he is. He just wants to say hello. This is Jax. Anyway... This is this channel is normally 100% Dollar Tree. However, when I do a thrift flip, obviously I have to get my items from a thrift store. But then I use all Dollar Tree supplies to flip them. Jax, can you say hi? He he wants to play. We're trying to learn a new trick. Jax, give me hugs, hugs. We're not. We haven't learned it yet. Hugs, Jax. Jax, hugs. Jax, hugs. No, hugs. We're trying it. We're learning. We can dance. We can anyway. We do tricks. Okay. So, um, and he got groomed, so he's got his little bandana on from PetSmart. All right, so today, these are two very, very easy flips, but very effective. And I just want you to know, one of them I chose to do just so it was something you guys can copy because anybody can find this item at any thrift store. I mean, like, I would bet $1,000 you walk into any thrift store and you would find the second item that I'm going to do. All right, so let's talk about it. These are my thrift flips right here. So I'm going to remove some stuff, by the way, Dollar Tree, but it goes so well with my little vignette. All right, so the first one is the tray, which I'm going to show you here. This is, I got to say, when I found it, I believe I paid probably four bucks, I think, for it. Um, and when I found it, I was like, gosh, it's such a nice, big, sturdy piece. I don't think it's wood. If it is, it's really soft wood. I think it's more likely MDF. But um, I was just like, I loved it. I thought it was a really pretty, pretty um, piece. And initially, I had thought about making it a really tall riser, which it would also work for. I could have double-sided this and had, what was I thinking? Well, anyway, I didn't. Okay, but that's okay. I, made, I kept it a platter. So when I bought it, I also thought that I would paint this blue. I would get rid of the blue. Mm-mm, 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 because... Once I had it on my craft table and I was looking at it, I was looking at that blue and I was like, oh my gosh, look at the match, you guys. 
Is that not incredible? Do you want to see what it looked like before? Let me show you how I made this. This is a really cool tray all on its own, um, but it was a little outdated, I think, with the lemons, and the lemon print was faded, and so I cleaned it all up with some wipes. You can see how, like, it's sort of faded there in the corner, um, and so I'm just going to paint over this because I want to make sure that nothing comes through once I put my wall paper tile thing on there so <clears throat> I think believe I put two coats on it and then I just did a heavy whitewash on this but this blue paint is like a chalk paint so it will wipe right off but I just want to leave hints of this um, of a different level of color like I want to put some variations in the blue by doing some of this whitewash which I'm going to sand off and rub off and all that stuff so once that dries, um, and here we go, I'm going to put a second coat on that bottom there. It didn't come through at all, but I just wanted to be better safe than sorry. I only had one of those tiles, so I wasn't going to have a second chance. So it did put two coats on there. And also, I wanted to make sure it really stuck. Okay, so I'm going to sand, and I heavily sanded on the edges to give it a more unfinished, uh, shabby, chicish almost kind of look. And then, like I said, because that blue was sort of a chalk paint, this it it sands um, that white into it really nicely. I hope that makes sense. It like almost sanded the white into the color. So I just go around and do all that, get it all sanded to where I think I I want it. I was getting blue everywhere. This chalk, this blue chalk paint was just coming off everywhere. But of course, I wanted to keep that color because I loved it. It matched the wallpaper tile so well. And I just think it's kind of a cool color. So just going to go around, sand. Again, I did heavy on the edges to bring out sort of the brown um, color that was underneath. I think it's, I don't know that this is wood. I want to say it's probably like an MDF or something, but whatever it is, I was pulling that brown out on the edges. And also as I sand, sanded down this blue, you almost got like a blue green. Can you see it there on the top? It was just pulling out, which was perfect for the wallpaper tile. I wanted to use the olive picks on it. So all of that was just going to work out beautiful. Once I'm done sanding, I've got to wipe it down again because there's so much dust on it. So I'm just using my glass wipes actually to wipe it down and see how you're just seeing a hint of that white. It's so perfect. Just the perfect little touch there. Now I'm going to put this in. I run my fingers on the sides for measuring, but here's one clue, you guys. I'm only gonna cut one side down, right? So I'm gonna cut off the one edge and then start putting it in, and then I'll use my X-Acto knife to do the final edge on that. It's just a way of, um, I knew I was, I knew I could get a close cut with the X-Acto knife, but if I had left two edges uncut, it would have been really hard to get a really good cut because it wouldn't have fit in there so perfectly you would have had a crinkle in a corner if you didn't cut one side down so I'm gonna start laying it in there and <clears throat> I just want to make sure that my corners are in it's actually the first time down was probably the best but I pulled it up <laughs> I was like no I think I need to go over a little bit more this way anyway eventually I get it in there and then I take my roller and really make sure that it's down good and it's not gonna lift up the sticky on these is is fantastic they're really they're they're wonderful for, especially for a project like this I don't know on a wall would it last you know with temperature changes and whatnot but on this it will uh, so I'm just gonna roll it down to make sure I have no I almost broke it <laughs> make sure I have no bubbles in there and then I'll take my exacto knife and trim that final edge look at how beautiful that looks with the blue you guys it was one of those ah uh, moments because it was just like so such a perfect match and so beautiful. I'm just, and I loved this print when I bought it. I'm just so excited I found something that it worked perfect. 
perfect with. So trimming it off with that X-Acto knife. And then <clears throat> I really struggled with what I should wrap the handles with. And jute twine just seems to be everybody's go-to. So I wanted to be a little bit different. And I could see just the hints of the gold in there. And so I was like, yeah, the gold faux ribbon. I've never used it before. What am I going to use it for? And oh my gosh, I'm so glad I chose this because it really does look, it just looks stunning. It, this is such a, it looks like such a high-end piece. So when I'm wrapping this, you guys, in, because you want to get a good full tight coverage, I was going, I was re-wrapping, leaving only about a third of the width exposed. So um, I think I wrapped it like seven, eight times or something like that. And I'm pulling this really taut as I'm doing that, by the way. So it's just like pulling it, pulling it, pulling it really taut. Now, I only use um, hot glue to connect it, to start it, and then to finish it off, which I think is totally fine. Um, I, it's not like there's any pressure on this when you're, if you use it to pick it up with, right? It's not, it's not carrying any weight or anything. It's just, it's just decorative, but it looks so good. So I'm going to cut it off, glue it on the end, and then go and do the other side. And then this piece is done. I'm in love. I think it's so cool. I think I'll use it in my bedroom. I'm not sure. Anyway, I hope you guys like it as well. Let's go on to the complimenting piece for the vase. was but those lemons had faded I'm really not into lemons I didn't particularly like the design in the middle of the tray I thought it was I don't know I just didn't like it but I love this I absolutely love my cho choice of the gold and of course seeing on like something like this this is a perfect match to it okay let me show you my second piece because I am absolutely stunned and in love I hope you guys are getting a good visual on this let me talk about this. This vase, I told you, you can walk into any thrift store. It is the number one go-to send your woman a dozen roses vase, right? So <clears throat> I think I got it and I bought it because it was large and I wanted a large piece to redo and I also wanted to get something that anybody could buy. So it, I, listen, this just all goes together so well. I already had the olive, the olive picks from um, the Dollar Tree, I believe Minnesota Mickey sent them to me. Thank you, Minnesota Mickey. And um, I've had them for a while, so I was super happy to be able to use those. But can I just talk about the the texture on this and how it came out? It's so phenomenal, and it was an oops. Not an oops, it was like a, oh, wow, really? All right, so I'm gonna show you how I made this. Just watch this. just one of those great big glass vases and I mean I want to I think I paid like two bucks for it but you can get them at like every thrift store you ever go to and I wanted to do something like this where I knew it was something that everybody could copy because you can find these but it doesn't have to be the shape or anything obviously it's just glass so this technique is incredible it's super cool and it was completely by accident so I'm mixing my two greens which complement the color on the tray beautifully and um, because of course I always do this I want layered effect in my coloring not just a straight color so I'm always doing two colors I'm adding baking powder to it because I want to give it some texture and this almost gives it like a cement texture when you do that and a dauber so obviously the dauber is because it's gonna be a flowing texture if you try to use a brush, you're going to get brush marks in there. 
So I was being really careful too that I didn't see circles <laughs> in my texture. So you just keep dabbing, you just keep an eye on it. Um, and so I do one full coat around it and then I let it dry. Now the thing about baking powder is you'll have spots where you'll see the white. It didn't, for some reason, didn't get paint on top of it or it breaks away after it was painted. It was too big a chunk of, of the baking powder or something. It doesn't matter. You're just gonna go back over those once it dries. So one full coat, notice I'm not doing the fluted top. I'm leaving that, I'm gonna leave that glass. And so one full coat, I turned my fan on, I let it dry, I came back out, and then I just double checked where I had any like white spots that are from the baking powder, basically. So look at, it's so um, muted, right? It's a matte, I mean, it's not a gloss. I don't know why I put the ribbon on right here, but I did, that's okay. I, it should have been the last step. But I took the remainder of that gold faux leather and I'm gonna wrap the neck of it. Again, because I want it to complement the, um, the tray, which it does beautifully. So this is the same process. I'm leaving about a third of the ribbon ex exposed as I wrap around. So I'm overlapping. I'm not kneading it up perfectly. It's, it's an overlap. I like this look. It gives it a texture on the wrap as if that makes sense. Like it's, you know, it's, it's sort of a layered pleated almost, I guess it's not pleated, but it gives you almost that pleated look. And I do nothing special on the end. Again, this isn't a pressure point that's going to get picked up and touched all that. So I'm hot gluing it to itself. So the faux leather hot glued to itself sticks really well. So I just sort of pulled it down even there and glued it down. And now this step should have been second, but I'm doing it third. I'm just, oh, first I'm just a couple of those white spots. I'm dabbing a little glue on. Just a tiny bit of, I mean, not glue, paint, just to cover up some of the little um, baking powder spots that pop through, which is, is fine. And that anytime you do this, you usually have to go back and cover a spot or two of the white baking powder. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my Mod Podge, matte, finish Mod Podge, by the way, and a large brush. And this is important because <clears throat> when you put this on, you're going to see brush strokes. Um, so you have to use a large brush so you can really manipulate how it's going to look when you put it on. These are the olive branches I'm going to put in there. So somehow my camera didn't get turned as I was doing it, turned on. But it's just heavy, heavy Mod Podge and I'm stroke, do you see how I'm just stroking with the st structure of the vase? So I'm following the shape of the vase. So it was, you know, up and down, not around, because it's gonna change it. But here's what's gonna happen. That Mod Podge dries with the paint underneath and the, the um, baking powder. And look at how incredible that is. It's gorgeous. powder paint mixture would give me such an incredibly cool effect now I do and I'm gonna be doing it over and over again so listen creators the lesson for you is like don't ever be afraid to try right um you know I mean this is again when you're doing something like this I knew I could replace it if I messed anything up but I wasn't planning on messing anything up I was just trying to seal in my paint and then it just is like oh that's amazing that's really cool so I'll be doing this again. And it really does look like a pottery piece. 
except for I've left this glass up here. And I also love my choice there, just leaving the flute of it the clear. Okay, so I'm in love with my two pieces. I will absolutely be keeping them. Don't they look stunning with my hanging carpet as a backdrop? Yeah, and then this little piece just goes perfect. Okay, so which one's your favorite? I cannot wait to do more glass pieces like that. It was just like, wow. I mean, it's so cool. I've never seen it before. I don't know, is it anything that you guys have ever seen before? So remember the mixture was, I used two paint colors, that doesn't really matter, although it really helped with the, because notice the dimension in our color here. So that did really help. So two colors, same family color, all right? and. Baking powder, not too much baking powder. I would say it was about a third, it was a third ratio. And then um, dabbing it on, letting that completely dry, and then going over a heavy coat of Mod Podge, and we got this effect. I haven't seen it before. It's a very, it's a faux pottery effect. It's phenomenal. And if you could touch this, I wish we had touch television, because if you could touch this, it just feels like a cement texture. It's so incredibly cool. I'm in love with it. All right, guys. So again, I want to thank Tammy and Marika. I'm super excited to be part of this challenge. So please make sure in my description box, of course, is the playlist and the link to the two hosts. At the very least, I ask you to go visit both the hosts because it takes some work to put on challenges. So it's really nice that these people go to that extra work to help other creators like myself. Super excited. I'm probably going to hit 3,000 in the next couple of weeks. So that's like, actually maybe in the next week, who knows? That's like super phenomenal. And then my jump is to try to get to 10,000. So that's a jump, I know, but I'm working on it. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Again, I'd like to know your favorite Beatles song and then which one of these two things was your favorite? The vase, I think is it is for me just because I found this incredible new texture thing. So what would you call it? Faux texture. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, everybody have a great day. Great week, a great life. And as always from your singing crafty crafter, Sergeant. Now what was the line? Yeah. It's wonderful to be here. It's certainly a thrill. I'd like to take you home with me. I'd love to take you home. This sounds like a bad first date. Okay. Anyway, everybody happy hunting at your local Dollar Tree. I hope you find everything that you're looking for. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time here on Bella's Bargains. Bye-bye.